We are WNST, AM 1570, Taos of Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively on the road. We are in Florida for the NFL owners' meetings. We are in Florida for spring training, even though spring training is moving back to Baltimore on Thursday. We will be at opening day on Thursday. We'll be doing the Maryland Lottery uh, Crab Cake Tour. We're going to be bringing that thing back out on Fridays at Fadeleys. We're going to be live at, fi- at Fadeleys on Fridays from 2 until 5. All of it brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery in conjunction with Jiffy Loop. And, uh, of course, putting us on the road here, uh, all of our sponsors, including Royal Farms and our friends at Wise Markets. You have so many friends that make this stuff happen. Uh, while we chase Steve Bashotti and John Harbaugh, or some of us do, I will not be doing any chasing at least till the end of the week. Uh, Luke Jones joins us now. He is in Florida with me. Uh, we are uh, sort of like Elton John and Bernie Top in two separate rooms down here. But uh, the NFL owners meetings, we'll get to that a little later on in the week. And obviously, we're going to get to opening day a little later on in the week. But Luke, I don't, um, I, I don't even know how to go through what happened on Saturday um, with the death of Peter Angelos, and uh, you know, I'll bring you in on it. Um, you were the one that sent the WNSD text. I, I guess it's one of those, you know, Mo McKennedy was shot kind of moments where you're like, hey, where was I? What was going on? Like all of that. Um, where were you on Saturday afternoon when the WNSD text hit the streets? I, w- I had just checked out of the hotel and was meeting up with uh, my best buddy who lives down here uh, in the Orlando area and was going to spend the day with him and did spend the day with him actually went to Saturday night's game at Ed Smith stadium. And that's the one they literally... played, not like Friday night. <laughs> right. Correct. Correct. So, uh, so it was literally two minutes before he was supposed to be uh, in, at the hotel lobby to pick me up. And we were on our way to the ballpark and uh, I get the official statement uh, released through the Orioles by the Angelos family announcing Peter Angelos had passed away at age 94. So we sent out the text and, you know, read the statement, sent out the statement. And I mean, he was 94. We knew he had been in failing health for several years. Uh, it, it would be difficult to say it was shocking or surprising outside the realm of any time someone leaves this earth. Uh, but I, I think it's, you know, and I say this as a Christian man who does not want to speak negatively about someone who's passed on and but at the same time you know the baseball legacy things that i know you will have plenty of oxygen here in a, in a moment to talk about and and things we've talked about over the years and this happening uh in concord you know at the same time as you know the david rubenstein and the new ownership group is you know the announcement's imminent you know whether it's this week next week the week after that sometimes very soon it's going to become official uh, by all indicators you know, it's definitely a strange time uh again when you're talking about someone who was in their 90s and not of good health it's a thought that you know anyone who's experienced that with anyone in their own individual life uh, you you know uh, where that is but uh, it certainly uh, marks the end of an era i mean you're talking about a 30 year uh, time period where Peter Angelos was synonymous with the Orioles for better or for worse. And, and obviously talking about all the feelings that go with that, but uh, certainly, you know, a, 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 I'd say if I could summarize my feeling about it, a, a surreal feeling, uh, you know, to, to see uh, that news, to, to send that news out and just to know that, I mean, you're talking about a family that's owned the team for three decades and uh, Peter Angelos is no longer here on this earth. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was at a pool, and uh, so I didn't get it like at the moment. You know, my phone I'm not on my phone at a pool, and I looked down and and my phone exploded. Obviously, right? You know, my wife mm-hmm. was the first one to reach to me, um, and then you know there was that's the first one I saw was my wife was at the top of the thread. There were others below it, and then there was your text. I had yeah. was 30 minutes late getting getting to the news, and. Um, I literally just put my phone back down. I thought, you know, I'm at a pool right now. I'm and it's 72 degrees and it's not going to be on Thursday. <laughs> so, I'm just going to like leave it alone. I'm not going to say, you know, I'm just going to see what, you know, like who cares what I think? You know what I mean? I wrote a book, right? I mean, who cares what I think? I mean, you can go read it. Uh, and that's not what I think. The book was not what I thought. The book was what happened. The, uh, the Peter principles are a term paper it has nothing to do with my emotions it has nothing first person it's literally me reporting the reporting um Mm -hmm. and the facts and the facts that i recalled as a reporter being involved in that and 
you know, full disclosure for you and I, we are sitting here in Florida in the sunshine, chasing Steve Bishotti and John Arbaugh around after the baseball team's already making its way back home. They're going to beat us home at this point. Um, the notion that I was going to like run the Peter principles on Tuesday and Wednesday on the radio station, I was going to do that because it's over on Thursday anyway, right? I mean, they're going to announce on Thursday. I have every reason to believe that maybe they won't now because of Peter's death. Right? It's de- yeah. definitely possible, but I was with a high level Baltimore baseball executive on Thursday night in Fort Myers who uh, shall remain unnamed until I get my press credential back. Um, but I, you know, I talked to someone very as high up in the organization as one could go and uh, about my press pass briefly. Um, and this person said to me, just give it a week, give it a week. And that was on Thursday. I don't mm-hmm. think this person knew anything of Peter Angelos's imminent departure from the earth. Um, I just believe that baseball and the Orioles have blown this up to opening day, not only for, we are get the Jackson holiday, by the way, we haven't gotten the Jackson holiday, right? Yet, right? Like, but cause that was the big news before all of this happened, you know, Saturday morning, that was the big news, right? Um, it's such a big opening day. I mean, it's 101 wins. It's coming off a division champion. It's a starter. It's MVP candidates and rookie of the year sitting and all of this energy. And then there's the new ownership piece that stacks mm-hmm. onto it. Without Peter's death, without Peter's involvement, without John doing anything stupid, all of that sitting there for opening day. And there was this, in my mind, had we done this piece Saturday morning, had Peter Angelus not died this weekend, and we're talking about what I think would have happened, I believed on Thursday afternoon they were going to announce Rubenstein as official at the stadium where everybody gathers. That's the way the old Orioles would have done everything, is waited for the fans to gather um, like they waited for the fans to gather on um, the night back in 1988 and said that they'd started ground on Camden Yards. Like, I remember I was at the game that night. Uh, fantastic fans night against the Rangers back in 88. It was 36 years ago. feels like five minutes ago. Um, but for me, I was going to run the Peter Principles um, one last time as I saw it. Because it was the last time because he's selling the team and and there will be a new owner here by the weekend. Right. Like so that's kind of where I was coming from it. I, I'm not looking to spike the ball. I didn't like I, I literally um, I saw text threads. I was on traffic on the Courtney Campbell Causeway going to Clearwater to see the Little River Band and Air Supply. Um, got a thing in my life now to see new places. This is a new facility. I wanted to go check it out. And I'm crossing the causeway, and there's a red light right in front of Whiskey Joe's. And I hit my phone. This is after I got out of the pool. And I'm like, all right, I I have to put something up because Mickey Coachella's texting me. Alan McCallum's texting me. People are texting me and saying, what do you think? We're, we're, We're on your thread waiting for you to say something. Ding dong, the witch is dead. I, I, I don't know what people... I don't know. what I don't know what how to even I'm sort of speechless. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. The guy's dead. I don't know what to say about it that hasn't already been said. But here's where, what I'm going to say, because I've had 24 hours to say something about it. And I'm only going to say what I've texted privately to people and um, what people that have made me say something. Because nobody made, I mean, I was at a pool, I had a good time, I was at a concert, I had a couple beers, I'm in Florida. I'm not jumping up and down and like, my wife might have indicated that I would go get a bottle of champagne or something. And I certainly wasn't feeling that emotion. I, I, I guess you, you wonder what your emotion is going to be like when this sort of thing happens and how I would feel and where I would be. But in the aftermath, I was in front of Whiskey Joe's. So I wasn't thinking of Peter Angelos at that moment. I was thinking of Bobby Nick, um, who who died when and the Orioles never got good. And my mother died and the Orioles never, you know, like all mm-hmm. of that. And I pulled into the Whiskey Joe's parking lot and I, I put the air condition on because it was hot. You're out on the bay. It's It was 5 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock was the heat of the day. And I pulled over and I just started reading stuff. Yeah, I was seeing what other people were writing. And that was the moment where I saw that people like Pete Gilbert were crediting him with saving the team for Baltimore. 
the Baltimore banner said, Peter Angelos credited with keeping the Orioles in Baltimore. And I'm thinking, I knew that was going to happen. So, I, you know, like I said that to my wife for years. The day he dies, they're going to make him a hero. They, they just are. And they did. And it was a Saturday and it's opening. He's a hero. So who am I to say he's not a hero? Yeah, I, I, I'm the guy that's written the truth about all of it. But Sunday morning, I woke up in Tampa and um, read my phone a little bit. And again, I, I, I think the only thing I wrote on Facebook was from Whiskey Joe's. Oh, I saw Saturday night. I was seeing Little River Band. I had a nice seat. And they have a song called Cool Change. And it's a song about change, right? And I thought about that driving, and I said to my wife, I'm going to have a long-distance dedication for Oriole fans, not for Peter Angelos, but for Oriole fans, that, you know, time for some cool change. And I saw that Rubenstein had tweeted maybe on Thursday or Friday about fresh start. He had, he, he had a tweet before Peter died mm-hmm. about a fresh start. Fresh. There's a video the Orioles are doing like it's a fresh start, right? And I thought, um, that's that's the most important thing is the cool change, the fresh start that Rubenstein's coming on Thursday, whether Peter's still alive and incapacitated or whether he's gone. Either way, the team and the league were gonna make this announcement this week. Now, whether right. they whether they're April 14th making the announcement, I don't know. But like this is happening, it's going to happen, it's over with from an Angelos baseball perspective which is why i was going to run the peter principles but but here's what and i'm and and i still haven't made my mind up as you and i sit here we're down here in florida it is programmed to run on tuesday and wednesday because i had nothing else to run you and i were down here it's the owners meetings it's opening day you have you spent a little time with austin hayes the other day we're going to get that on the air so there's some stuff we're going to run but i did wake up on sunday morning i I interrupted you did you ask you, you wanted to say something about saturday night i think no Saturday. Uh, um, no, I mean, other than it, it was strange being at the first Orioles game after that news comes and just, and this really piggybacks what you just said. I think, look, putting aside, this is a human being who has family, who has friends. Uh, there, there's emotions that go into that, regardless of how anyone feels personally about any family out there. Uh, but from a baseball standpoint, you know, this, this hits different from the standpoint of, had this happened a year or two ago and John Angelos was running the team and there was no, you know, we could talk about rumors, whispers, suggestions of what might happen five years from now. We knew that this change was already coming. So I think from that standpoint, and Peter died on Christmas Eve, it would have been a different feeling about Peter's death. Like not knowing who the next owner is and having all of these tentacles the last nine days. Right. Exactly. So so that's, so that's where I think it's a little bit different. And and the one thing I do want to point out, is remember when the news broke about the Rubenstein group making, you know, purchasing the team, uh, the initial purchase is for 40% and with the understanding that the remaining percent, you know, the remaining uh, the remainder of the club would be purchased after Peter's death. So not that that's in the forefront today, but that is something, you know, that I thought of an hour after this news came out. But yeah, I mean, just, you know, they, Obviously, they did a moment of silence at Ed Smith Stadium, at, as you would expect. I mean, it's the longtime owner of the ball club. And, you know, be, but beyond that, you know, it, it was a baseball game. You know, it was the last the last spring game at Ed Smith Stadium at, down in Sarasota for the for the the, the 2024. So so that was, you know, that was a little surreal. You know, uh, again, I, I really want to choose my words carefully. Uh out of as respect do I. And that's for why human life. Right, and, and, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, but so that's, that's where why, the, you know, I haven't said anything yet, and I'm about to, because I'm, right, you know, right. I'm, I'm going to make some waves in this segment, because I have sure. some things that need to be said in the aftermath of the reporting. But, but sure. my, my, my words are about the reporting and the legacy, and that you can say good things, and you don't have to say bad things about Peter, but you don't have to make stuff up. You, you, you don't sure. you don't have to credit him with things he did. I think do. I know where you're going with this because and I'm actually looking at the story right now. I have the Washington Post pulled up from September 2nd, 1992, which is a year before Peter bought the team. Orioles 30 year lease. Uh, and you can speak to this way better than I could. I mean, you you were in the midst of covering 
uh, local sports at, at that point in time. As and my I was documentary nine, will point out when it comes I, out in a couple right. of Right, and I was yeah. nine years old at the time, but it, it was a very unique situation that the team actually did not have a formal lease in place in 1992, the first year at the ballpark. Now, of course, they weren't going to leave this gym that the entire baseball world was marveling at, but it was late in that 1992 season when a 30-year lease was reached, you know, and that was, you know, Peter bought the team the following year. So go ahead. Cause I know uh, you want to address this. Well, at, at 1040 on Sunday morning, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm eating a banana and a bagel in West Tampa. And I got a, I got a text from uh, a media friend who sent me over the Baltimore banner story. Orioles hero or tyrant Baltimore won't see another Peter Angelos. And I like Tim Prudente. He's a great, great writer. He's just a great writer. It was a great piece in that way. It was a, it was a, it was a, a, a well-written piece. He's a former Sun reporter. He's a professional, um, as am I. But don't tell Steve Angelos or Chad Steele that down here t- this week. Um, so I read the piece, and um, much like the banner headline of credited with keeping the Orioles in Baltimore, dude, you're the Baltimore banner. Do better. Come on, Kimmy. Do better. Come on, Chris, do better. You know, you know better than this. Chris and I said, Chris knows, Chris Corman knows of my angst about this. Um, but there were two things in it that I thought were inaccurate. Um, one, he didn't save the team for Baltimore. And two, and this was really something that like, this chaps my ass because I saw tragedy. I saw trauma. Uh, I saw terrorization of real human beings who are still alive. And some of them, even in the aftermath, are still afraid of Peter Angelos on, in his death and still feel like they need to over glorify and say nice things or find some balance uh, in regard to his life and his legal battles and his generosity and the fact that his name's on UB and the fact that he handed hundred dollar bills out to poor Cuban people in front of Peter Schmuck. So that Peter Schmuck would recount that 30 years ago. I have very little doubt about that. Um, so this is what I wrote. This is what I wrote like from my text to my friend and I'm, I'm not, and this is a media friend. Okay. Two things. He didn't save the team for Baltimore. And the story said he never punched down to say in an obituary that Peter Angelos never punched down is to completely um, to dehumanize the people who are victimized and traumatized and terrorized by his actions, unnecessary actions. So I wrote, he punched down every, he punched down every chance he got once he once he wasn't punching up because the story was about him beating up these these six firms for 330 million dollars of his pie who were poisoning people like my father my stepfather my neighbors my uncle everybody that worked out at the point so he was a hero to my stepfather walter karzak who died married to my mother concetta on Drew Street in East Baltimore, Walter worked at the point for years, mesothelioma. I have law firm stuff at my home with law firm of Peter Angelos after my mother died that I never even followed up on because I didn't want to deal. When my mother died, my mother died with money in Peter Angelos's care. And I never even called to get it because I was so terrorized that I didn't even want to call on behalf of my dead mother to get what apparently is coming to me or what might be coming to me. So um, I said he punched down every chance he got once he wasn't punching up. And my quote in that Baltimore Banner piece, and I appreciate Tim for making me sound civil, because I'll I'll probably sound less than that at various points, probably have in the past. Um, That's what happens when they don't pay a $30,000 bill and they try to put you out of business and they – give you a credential, don't give me one. And they're still sending people around in October to terrorize you and me at our jobs on on, on a Thursday night in Arlington, Texas. But um, I wrote to this media person, why do you think no one would give you a quote on his death? Bud Selig declined. Larry Lachino declined. Um, you, you know, 
everybody declines to say anything because like my mother once said, and good Christians like yourself, you got nothing good to say. Don't say anything at all. I do a radio show. Peter Angelos had his hands, his billionaire hands into anything that could destroy me or my business. He was interested in that sort of thing. So that's the way he lived his life. So um, I said, there are other people that are still afraid of him and he's dead, which really speaks to the power that he had in, in, over people, over their finances, over their the way they make their living, over the way they, they, they appreciate baseball and people like me. Um, so this is, this is my final statement on Peter. He terrorized and traumatized a whole lot of people. He was a bully and a coward, but aren't all bullies. That's how I will remember him. And I knew on the day he died that you and everyone else would credit him with saving the team for Baltimore, which is pure bullshit. He did plenty of good things that are true history. And I can I can write that a bit about him getting money for Walter Karzak, my father-in-law, my, my, my stepfather. My father was never in that program. My father died before Peter Angelus got rich and, you know, and we didn't seek all of that uh, afterward, the $54 a month or whatever my mother got from the pension at the point. No need to polish a dead billionaire's tarnished legacy. It's tarnished for a reason. There were many needless victims of his acts, many, and I'm one of them. So that's my official statement on it. And uh, everybody else can, you know, on Saturday and Sunday, we're looking for something for me. I, all I can think about is the things I've said to you and the things I've lived, even going to the ballpark in Arlington in, in October. I have never been treated well by anyone. By, by, there are people who are dead now who mistreated me before their death. And they had to do that to keep him happy. <laughs> so, I, 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 you know, like... In the aftermath of all of this, it's so sad. It's been sad for as long as once I got mad back in six and seven and eight. After that, it just became sad. When Joe Flacco's winning games and they stink and they're winning Super Bowls and they stink and Buck Showalter and they can't keep him around and Manny Machado and Chris Day, just, just all of it. I mean, other than Delman Young in a couple of years, it, it mostly stunk. I mean, just in every single way, in every in every way possible. The television broadcast stunk after John Miller. The team stunk. It stunk. And he made one point eight billion dollars for his two kids who don't like each other and don't like anybody and don't really like baseball. So the whole thing, I called it a civic tragedy for years. And it is. And it was. And you know the difference is the sun's coming up now on Thursday. There's going to be a new owner. I might run the Peter Principles. You're driving around Tuesday and Wednesday here. It's not me spiking the ball. It's me being down here in Florida and doing other things and planning to think this is the end of the era, right? It was the end of the era without him dying. Like it was going to be the end of the era right. anyway. And so I'm not looking to spike the ball, but I'm also – not looking to have people come up to me for the rest of my life and tell me that Peter saved the team for Baltimore because that's just not true. It's not true history. And um, shame on Pete Gilbert. If you see Pete, tell him that he's wrong. If you see the ba you see anybody that tells you that Peter Angelo saved the team for the city, it's just a lie. And and it's it's flowering up a dead billionaire that doesn't need to be flowered up. If you can't find something better to say about him that's true, then then do what. Bud Selig did. Don't say anything. But I can't not say anything. He traumatized me, terrorized me, tried to put me out of business. That for that, am I mad or no? I persevered. He, you know, I guess he taught me a life lesson in that way. I will go back to David Rubenstein's statement, which of course David St Rubenstein is going to be respectful uh, in the position that he's in, coming in as new owner as the Angelos family uh, sells the team. Uh, but I'll go back to what he said. The city of Baltimore owes him a debt of gratitude for his stewardship of the Orioles across three decades and for positioning the team for great success. My hope is that when David Rubenstein is no longer owning the Orioles, you know, sells the team, whatever happens uh, over in the coming years, I'm hoping that the next owner will say that the city of Baltimore owes 
Ruben signed a debt of gratitude for his stewardship of the Orioles across however long he owns a team and for positioning the team for great success. I'm hoping that we'll say that about the next owner because the legacy on the field, baseball. I think you just wrote you, you my letter it. to David Rubenstein for me. You, you said you, it. You just gave me great fodder. I'm just, I'm hoping letter. that's for, sure. I'm hoping that's foreshadowing for what this next, this next stone. And look, this would be so and, much and, better. I mean, to be right. free the, it could be, it could and be, be clear, so much better and it should have been so much better for all. It of should these have. Years. And the, the one thing I will say uh, about the local element, cause you're right. He didn't save the team. It, the, the lease came the year before he, he bought the team. You know, they weren't going anywhere for 30 years. It was 19, you know, through 2022 uh, at that point in time. Uh, but I will say this, and, and I say this coming from the perspective of being an eight or nine year old at the time, and also hearing my father talk about the team, hearing my grandparents talk about the team. There was excitement about a local, a local success story buying the team in 1993 after Eli Jacobs, after all the uncertainty of the eighties with EBW and the Colts leaving and, you know, were the Orioles going to move to Washington, all of that, you know, there was excitement at that point when Peter bought the team at that point, there was optimism about having the appeal of an, of a local owner. I am hoping this time around 30 years later, 31 years later now uh, that that comes to fruition in a much more meaningful way and, and a much more prolonged way of the Orioles being successful on the field. Obviously, they're in a great position right now. And for them to cultivate uh, better roots, more meaningful connections with businesses and people and and wanting Baltimore as a whole, you know, whatever that means to any individual, f- fine. But to, to really, you know, grab a hold of this team uh, in a way that it hasn't for a long, long time. And we're seeing it there's a lot of excitement right now. We've talked about, we'll get into Jackson holiday in a second that, you know, even that feelings about that aside, everyone's excited about this team. So my hope is that Rubenstein and, and this new group coming in, hit it out of the park. And when we're talking about the next owner at some point, hopefully many years from now, I'm hoping that we're talking about this next ownership group doing a really great job and doing all the things that people hoped uh, that Peter Angelos would be, owning the Orioles three decades ago. Your legacy is what you really did. It's, it's, it, it's not, it, it's not fiction. It, it, it's, it's biographical. And for anybody that wants to know anything about Peter, if you're young girl, like Luke, if you're young, if you're old and don't remember things, um, you know, I, after Adam Jones famously came to me and said, why does he hate you so much? That's what Adam Jones said to me. Why does Peter, why does the old man hate you so much? That's the words he used on the field up uh, at city field. And I think he wanted a 30 second answer. Like somebody wanted me to put a picture of the ding dong, the witch is dead up on social media Saturday. And I don't feel that way. I just don't. I mean, those emotions are long since, I mean, I've been dealing with the, with the, the, the kid that was born on third base and thinks he had a triple and was trying to scam our, 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 our state out of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, really, with the land down there. That's where we were 90 days ago, 90 mm-hmm. days ago. That Well, I'm not selling the team. We're keeping the team. I've told the governor we're keeping the team. And, you know, meanwhile, the governor still hasn't spoken to me because John Angelos lied to him. So, like, it, 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 it never ends, but it will end. And Thursday there'll be a new beginning, and there'll be the sunshine and the fresh start. And David Rubenstein will have his own legacy to write and his own headlines to write and his own, the Rubenstein principles and or philosophies or theories or whatever they are. And um, people have asked me a lot about my press pass. I mean, like, you know, it's a, it's a cause celeb in my life. Are you going to get your press pass back and, and whatever? I hope so. I mean, I think he's a good guy. I think he's a normal guy. I think, it, you know, and if he doesn't, it would be standard operating procedure and it would, Caused me to think not a lot's changed because if a lot's changed, they're going to want people like me to see it because I still have one thing. Rock Cabaco doesn't have. I have credibility. I never took a check from Peter. I never went on and had to say things that Peter edited. I, I never had to do that. And I'm the only, I'm one of the only ones like literally one of the only ones that that never kowtowed. And that'll be part of my legacy when the day I die. People will say, oh, he fought with Peter. An-. No, he didn't fight with Peter Angelos. He stood up to Peter Angelos' lies. He stood up to the Orioles' lies. And there were plenty of them. 
And it wasn't me making things up. It wasn't Peter Schmuck making things up or Ken Rosenthal. These things really happen, and they traumatize people, and they terrorize people, and it's over now. And for that, be like hating Germany over the war from 100 years ago or hating Japan. Like, you know, just like it's over. It's just over. And um, you saw me wearing my orange jersey at Ed Smith Stadium. You've you spent five days with me now in a row. It's hard for people to believe. But like, um, <laughs> you know, I'm I, I'm hoping I, I'm not cocky about any of it. I I'm hoping they're. They're they're better people, I, and I have to believe that they will be. And I, um, all the signs point to the fact that they understand there's trauma. You know, when I write to David Rubenstein, th- 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 it, there's a reason people, the media couldn't get people to say nice things about Peter on Saturday because they're, they're you know there's there's just a there's a a bad breadcrumb here. It's a bad trail of a bad a lot of bad things for 30 years that the ownership has done that the new guy can. I don't want to say he can click his heels together magically and change this thing overnight, but the team's going to be pretty good. Mm-hmm. And the piece of advice I will give him when I write to him, in addition to your wisdom, is just um, Lenny Moore would would always say this in his speeches, especially after he lost his 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 son. He'd say, "Being nice doesn't cost you a penny. Doesn't cost you nothing to be nice to people. It's free to be nice to people." Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I hope that at some point I walk down to that stadium at some point after Thursday and somebody will be nice to me. <laughs> I just literally, um, by the way, Derek Mackey was very nice to me in uh, Sarasota. Uh, he runs the ticket office in Sarasota. He'll be up there. So I did have some fun in uh, Sarasota. You're having fun too. You went to the games. I mean, baseball is a beautiful thing when it's done right. And it's spring training and you and I've had a nice week together. And uh, the Peter Angelos thing is Certainly not the highlight or the low light of our week. It just it was a text that went out that we had to discuss, and um, yeah. I'm glad it's over. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just glad it's over. I'm glad this segment's over. <laughs> I I look forward to a new baseball season, as we have been talking about now for what two months almost. I look forward to seeing what a new ownership group is going to do for this organization. To your point, it's not a, a click your heel scenario. There's a lot of work that has to be done on a lot of fronts beyond just. The fact that the team does look like it's really good and heading in a great direction. And heck, they're coming off a 101 win season. I mean, that speaks for itself. But And that's the part of the Rubenstein thing. It's true. They are positioned. He left them, they, in, a, he left them in a good they position. Are in, that they is are in good true. position. I can they are. That. So I am, I am excited about the future. I am excited uh, to see uh, where the Baltimore Orioles are heading, uh, knowing that Elise is in place and they're going to be here. And – uh, there is a new ownership group, and there's a great off, great front office, and there's a heck of a team on the field. It's a lot to be excited about. As I've said to you throughout the spring, I'll continue to say it even as we uh, you know, spar over Jackson Holiday potentially. Uh, and that, uh, there's there's a heck of a lot to be excited about. Uh, these are good times to be an Orioles fan. But, yeah, definitely a, a surreal feeling over the weekend as uh, Peter Angelos passed away. All right. We'll uh, step out. We'll take a break. We are in Florida. We are doing the NFL owners meetings. One of us is. The other one's hanging out at the bar. I'll give you guys a a check on that. Uh, We've been hanging out in South Florida for the last four days uh, from Fort Myers to Sarasota. Uh, I spent some time in Clearwater. Luke's been in Orlando. We're in Orlando for the next 48 hours. We will be back home on Wednesday. Luke will be out at uh, practice on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we kick off the 2024 season. It is opening day. Follow us out on social media. He is Baltimore Luke. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore positive.